This video, for me at least, is by far the most exciting video we've worked on in 2020 so far. And that's because I'll be covering all the latest updates on Apple's upcoming pair of augmented reality glasses. Now, in case this doesn't sound like much, these glasses are what Apple actually considers the follow-up and even the replacement for the iPhone. So yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy the future of tech. Okay, so we are currently at a point where smartphones cannot really go any further. If you look at the latest iPhone, the latest Samsung Galaxy S20s, they're all essentially the same. They're all a piece of glass with almost no bezels that we interact with. And sure, phones will be getting thinner and thinner to a point where a few years from now, they could be as thin as a piece of paper. And then foldable phones are now becoming a thing. So again, a few years from now, we will have extremely thin tablets that fold down into a smartphone. But the idea behind it still remains the same. And by this fact, I mean that in order for us to interact with the digital world, we need to have this book, this piece of glass in our hands. So yeah, we need that specific device instead of, you know, the digital world being merged with us, so to say. And this is what AR is trying to do. So AR comes from augmented reality. And unlike VR or virtual reality, which fully immerses you into a completely different world, augmented reality simply adds virtual elements to the real world. Imagine assembling a PC or a car and seeing arrows that are floating in the air that point towards which components you need to put in next. Or imagine being surrounded by 12 massive monitors that are simply floating in the air, even though in the real world, there is nothing there. Or imagine seeing the weather outside right in front of your eyes without even having to pull up the curtain. Or walking on the road and seeing the arrows that show you which direction to take right on the road itself or just floating in the air. How cool would that be? Well, this is what AR is truly capable of and Apple is currently fully invested into bringing us a pair of AR glasses that will indeed allow us to merge our digital world with a real world. And they're actually extremely serious about this. In fact, according to the information, Apple held a presentation for their employees in late 2019, where they told them that AR glasses are indeed the future and something that will eventually replace the iPhone. Now, don't get me wrong. The AR glasses will not fully replace the iPhone when they get released. Instead, more and more companies will be focusing on AR and AR is the evolution after smartphones, just like laptops and tablets have pretty much replaced desktop PCs for most people. Now, we've had a ton of info about Apple's AR glasses over the years, and we ourselves made quite a lot of videos on Apple's AR glasses over the years. So our last video was back in November 2019, but since then, we've had a lot of major updates. First of all, the release date has been moved significantly. In Chikuo, pretty much the world's most reliable analyst when it comes to Apple, stated back in October 2019 that the Apple Air glasses will be launching in Q2 2020. Now, this is something that Bloomberg has also stated, that the glasses are targeted for a 2020 release. But unfortunately, this no longer seems to be the case. The information published a report back in November, which went through all the details that Apple has told their employees during that internal presentation. And apparently this presentation was given to around 1,000 employees, which is a lot. And it was also held at the Steve Jobs Theater, which means that the presentation itself was very likely similar to a product launch, you know, an actual Apple event, just to employees or then, you know, the public. The report claims that the event was led by Apple's recently appointed head of AR and VR, Mike Rockwell. And it seems like they talked about how 3D scanning would work on the glasses and how advanced human detection would also be present. Interesting enough, it seems like Apple's glasses might actually match the Oculus Quest in terms of the design and also the functionality, with a sleeker looking build and more use of fabrics and lightweight materials in order to make it more comfortable to wear for extended periods of time. Now, this is very, very strange, because you see, the Oculus Quest was actually one of my favorite products of all 2019. You can watch our full review of the Quest here, and I love it so much that I actually bought one for my entire team. It's, it's an incredible piece of technology, literally amazing. So definitely check it out if you get a chance. Link in the description to check out the Oculus Quest and also support the channel by doing so. Uh, but anyways, the Quest is a VR headset, meaning that you're fully immersed in that virtual game world whereas AR would be something very different. The report stated that Apple's headset will have a high resolution display and cameras that will allow users to read small text and see other people standing in front and behind virtual objects. So from the looks of it, this will either be a very bulky AR headset or it will be both an AR and a VR headset. According to this report, Apple executives said that they plan on reaching out to third-party developers as early as 2021 in order for them to start building apps for the headset, which would then launch in 2022. 
However, something that did get me quite excited is that according to the information, Apple has also talked about a second headset codenamed N421, with the first one being N301. Now, the second headset would actually resemble high-end sunglasses with thick frames that house the battery and the chips. At least the prototype does look like that, according to some anonymous Apple employees who decided to come forward. So it seems like Apple might be releasing two headsets in that case. Yes, a VR and AR headset first, uh, which will also be made for gaming and watching movies, which should sell more units because of this, followed by another model, which might be AR only, uh, which will indeed be that pair of true Apple AR glasses. But those are only set to come in 2023. Now, walking with a pair of glasses with a bunch of cameras in them can be very intrusive for some people. So I'm quite curious to see how Apple would market this. Actually, remember when Google Glasses were bashed for being able to record a video whenever their users wanted? Um, as this basically removed all the privacy that people around you had. Well, something similar might happen to Apple, even though Apple does have a very good privacy policy. So I'm guessing that Tim Cook will make a statement saying that the glasses will not record a video at all, uh, as the cameras will only be used for 3D positioning or something along those lines. Now, just as a side topic, wouldn't it be cool to literally have just one single device like this pair of glasses that does everything for you, including authenticating you everywhere, pretty much like a master key. Now, Apple does have iCloud Keychain, which kind of works like that, but that one only works on Apple devices. So if you want a true master key for all of your passwords and data that works on pretty much any device, well, in that case, you check out NorPass, our sponsor for this video. Now, in case NordPass sounds familiar, well, that's because it was developed by the same cybersecurity experts that made the extremely well-known NordVPN. NordPass lets you save all your passwords inside one secure app that's protected by a secure password as well as Face ID or your fingerprint. It features auto-save and auto-fill, so that you don't have to copy and paste your passwords every single time, and it also features a password generator which creates secure and complex passwords for you automatically. It works on iOS, Android, macOS, Windows, Linux, with dedicated app supports for those systems, as well as extensions and browsers such as Chrome, Firefox, Opera, and Edge, which means that yes, you can even use NordPass on any device that supports these browsers, including your smart TV. NordPass offers you 24 seven customer support 30-day money-back guarantee, an optional two-factor authentication, and so, so much more. Get a 60% discount at norpass.com slash zone of tech, or simply use the coupon code zone of tech. And by doing so, you're also supporting the channel because we're also a Norpass affiliate ourselves. So we get a commission on every purchase. So yeah, thank you once again. And thanks to Norpass for sponsoring this video. Now back to Apple's AR glasses, there's a way you can already try it. So Apple launched ARKit, the API, back in 2017 with iOS 11. An API is essentially a library, a collection of functions that developers can take use of when developing an app. For example, rather than developers having to manually code 3D depth mapping using the back-facing cameras on the iPhones, they could just invoke a specific function in ARKit, and they can do all of that in just seconds. Something that they would have, I don't know, spent maybe a few weeks or even months working on can be done in just a few seconds by simply invoking that function. So it not only saves developers a ton of time, but it also results in the same experience across all the apps that do take use of ARKit. And ARKit 1.0 was absolutely incredible. So it featured real-time shadows that were actually cast by objects, and even real-time reflections that were being cast by other objects from the real world onto the virtual objects. Like, that's absolutely insane. ARKit 2, which came out with iOS 12 a year later, this one improved the object tracking significantly, and even added a new measuring tool uh, for iOS, which allowed you to measure objects in the real world with a surprising level of accuracy. And then, just last year in 2019, with the introduction of iOS 13, Apple launched ARKit 3.0, which introduced something quite extraordinary. And that was people occlusion. Essentially, virtual objects can now detect people and other objects in the real world, and they can actually avoid them. So for example, if there was a plane or a car driving around the person, it would drive around the person rather than, you know, through it which is just an unbelievable technological achievement. I mean, virtual objects being able to interact with real objects, this is the future of AR. And interesting enough, it's already here. And I mean, you can already try this out in apps such as IKEA Place, which I highly, highly recommend for seeing exactly how certain pieces of furniture might look in your home. And there's many more AR apps available in the App Store, which you can try on your iPhone or your iPad. Now, Apple just filed for a brand new patent for their AR slash VR headset just last week, so they're constantly improving on their current prototypes. 
And according to this patent, Apple will be using something called Wave Guided Display System in order to deliver exceptional optical performance. Now, uh, this patent also states that the HMD, or the head-mounted device, will need to be tethered to an iPhone, an iPad, or a Mac, like we've seen previously reported. So you need to have an iPhone, an iPad, or a Mac in order to use this thing. It won't be a separate device, it will be basically an accessory to one of those devices. At least for the time being, this will not be a standalone device, probably due to the fact that Apple wants to keep this device as thin and as light as possible. As if they do include a powerful processor, they will need, you know, probably cooling, a massive battery, uh, which will get quite uncomfortable. And, you know, it will be heavy and bulky, so they're probably trying to avoid that. This way, your iPhone will be doing all the processing or your iPad or Mac, um, and then the data would be wirelessly streamed to the headset itself. Fun fact, this is actually something that CNET has also reported back in 2018. They released a massive report uh, with a ton of details inside Apple's upcoming AR headset project. So definitely read that report. It's pretty amazing. Link for that in the description. So that's from back in 2018. That was probably the biggest and also the first major, yeah, definitely the first major report that we've had regarding the Apple Air glasses. Now, Mark Gurman from Bloomberg has also released a pretty detailed report recently with a lot of extra details on Apple's AR and VR plans. And according to him, Apple will actually start including a new 3D sensor system in the upcoming iPad Pro and the 2020 iPhones. Uh, which will allow users to create 3D reconstructions of rooms, objects, and even people. What this is, is essentially a time-of-flight sensor or a TOF sensor, just like we've seen in the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, the S10 5G, and the new S20 Plus and the S20 Ultra. So this array has an infrared receiver and an infrared transmitter. So the infrared transmitter sends a beam of infrared light, which then gets reflected back by objects around you to the infrared receiver, which based on the number of rays that got reflected back and the time it took for the rays to be reflected back, it can calculate the distance between itself and an object and therefore map it in 3D. Now, on the Note 10 Plus, you can indeed map objects in 3D, but honestly, this feature works maybe 5 or so percent of the time. It's extremely unreliable, and you can't really use it in many apps, so it's a massive gimmick, and once you use it once, then you'll probably completely forget about it. Apple's Time Flight sensors will be taking full use of ARKit and this brand new 3D mapping engine, which will very likely be the same one that the AR slash VR headset will be using in 2022. And in the end, I do believe that Apple's VR headset has a ton of potential. However, this potential uh, is heavily reliant on the developers and the apps that the developers can make. Google and Microsoft have both trialed the AR space and unfortunately both of them failed. Uh, mostly because none of them were actually focusing on everyday consumers, but instead they were focusing on more specialized workflows for companies rather than individual consumers. Apple will be focusing solely on the everyday user. Now, there is, of course, the downside of, hey, if I want AR, I'll have to wear the headset all the time, which is, uh, you know, quite inconvenient because maybe I don't want to wear glasses. However, this might not be the case anymore because there's a company called Mojo Vision, a tech startup, and they've developed the world's first true smart contact lens that can actually project AR elements onto the real world. Yes, contact lens. AR contact lens, how cool is that? And they actually have a PPI of 14 Thousand. Yes, 14,000 PPI compared to the 458 PPI on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, for example. Also, you could apparently see in the dark thanks to these. So yeah, exciting times are definitely coming. And if we do indeed get useful apps that improve on our daily lives by combining meaningful productivity apps into the real world, then this will indeed eventually replace smartphones entirely. But yeah, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about the possibility of not just wearing Apple AR glasses, but also AR glasses in general replacing smartphones today. Do you think that will happen? If so, when would you say that would happen? My guess would be probably around 2035. That would be my guess. But let me know in the comments what do you guys think. If you have enjoyed this video and you want to support the channel, definitely consider becoming a member. For only £0.99 a month, which is actually less than a cup of coffee, you get access to, well, you support the channel, and then you also get these really cool badges next to your name that actually evolve the longer you've been a member for. And everyone can see the badges, including me and, you know, everyone else. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and also, if you want to see more videos like this one, definitely subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever a brand new video comes out. But yeah, this has been pretty much it for this one. I'm Daniel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. So enough tech, signing out. Cheers.